Got it. All right, I'm ready. All right. Welcome to Healing Echoes. Today we have with us Kiwan. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Kiwan Amy. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit um, about yourself and what you're going to be sharing today? Yes. Um, so a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Durham, North Carolina, uh, and I went from Southern High School in Durham, North Carolina, and enlisted into the United States Air Force as an in-flight refueling specialist, um, where I served 10 years, but it was my time was cut short due to a traumatic motorcycle accident that I suffered May 5th, 2017. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly what we'll be focusing on today. Awesome. Well, thank you for your service. Yeah. Um, so let's start with kind of where you were in your life when the when the accident happened. Oh, yeah. So, again, like I said, you know, serving in the United States Air Force um, as an in-flight refueling specialist. And that, for those who do not know, is where you refuel airplanes mm -hmm. in midair. Wow. <laughs> so not, not on the ground, in midair while you're flying at hundreds of miles per hour. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, just think of it as pulling up to a flying gas station, basically. Yeah, um, is what I would think of it as. And um, so that's what I was doing at the time. I was also uh, I also had a my own business. So I was a CEO of my own business called Kiwi Enterprise LLC, where I did website design and management, mm. social media marketing, as well as photography. And which is interesting because on that same day that I had my motorcycle accident, May 5th, I was uh, doing photography for a website that I had just taken over and I was the webmaster of. So I wanted to update their pictures on their website because they were out of date. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You were, you were tweaking it. I was. Um, so I know in the, in the initial meeting when we were chatting, you kind of went a little bit in depth is um, to what happened in the accident. Do you mind sharing that with us? Definitely not, not a problem there. So, um, again, this is May 5th. I actually had to work that night for the uh, military, which is kind of how that ties in to me being service connected. Mm -hmm. But anywho, um, I had to go take these photos, like I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And with going to do this, it was like middle of the day. Um, I just ate lunch with a friend and um, I went home to grab my camera because I forgot it. But instead of just grabbing the camera, I also switch keys wow. and uh, grab my motorcycle because I wanted <laughs> to go for a ride because it was such a nice day. It was, it was a beautiful, beautiful day that day in May wow. in North Carolina. And, and uh, North Carolina has some really great weather. And then it has some of that bipolar weather <laughs> <laughs> where in the winter it goes from 30 to 80, mm. you know, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Like literally that happened this year. Sounds like so, Florida. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally that happened this year. Right before I went to Vermont, it was 30 below freezing. Mm. And, and then the week while I was in Vermont, it had hit 80. Wow. And I'm like, what? What? It's just yo-yoing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what is going on? It's crazy. Uh, and so anywho, back to the story, you know, I go grab my motorcycle because I just really wanted a great ride. I, I love a good ride, like any motorcyclist will yeah. tell you. And so I go hop on the bike and go over to the uh, place of where I need to take the photos. But this this drive, it, it, it was too short. It, it was too short for a motorcyclist. We we don't like short rides. We, <laughs> we, we like to get out and, and cruise for a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so that little 10 minute ride that I had and, and motorcyclists know it, it's probably more of a five minute. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, that little 10 minute ride, uh, did not, it did not satisfy me. And so I decided that since I still had a little bit more time before I had to go, um, to work, I was going to ride to Jordan Lake in North Carolina for those who are residents of North Carolina and know the area. Mm -hmm. uh, so I rode out from Durham, North Carolina to Jordan Lake. And uh, that's a pretty good ride going one way. In, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's about 25, 30 minutes um, if you're riding. So that's a good ride just one way. Mm -hmm. 
and coming back is going to be the same, 25, 35 minutes or 30 minutes. And so as I am sitting out there uh, on this little, what I call like a little dock, I don't really call it a pier because it's not elevated out of the water, it's uh, sitting on it. Right. So I'm sitting out there and that's, that's usually one of my places I go just to relax, unwind, um, get some peace, you know, just be at one with just myself, my thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, God, because I am a faith believer mm -hmm. and, you know, just to, just to have a little, a long time, you know? Right. Uh, so I, I wrapped that session up because a car went by that woke me up <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait a minute. I got something to do. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not just out here chilling. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not just out here chilling for the day. And so I was like, wait, I got to go to work. So I get back on the bike, you know, and it was kind of one of those dreadful things. You're like, oh man, I really, I really don't want to leave, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But I had to go. Right. Um, and so I left. And as I am leaving on my head, so on my on my motorcycle helmet, mm -hmm. I had a Bluetooth headset. Mm -hmm. And in said Bluetooth headset, you can connect it to your phone, not only to talk on it, but to listen to music. Mm -hmm. And this is back around when that Bruno Mars 24 karat magic Mm -hmm. uh album was was booming you know everybody oh, yeah. was listening to it <laughs> i was jamming to say the least mm -hmm. uh, and so i have that tuned in and i'm listening to it as i'm riding down the street um i believe i was on highway 751 for those who are familiar and trees are whizzing by i mean again just enjoying this amazingly beautiful day mm -hmm. and I just happened to look up and this car is pulling out. And I'm like, what, what, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> like what? Yeah, like, I know what? you see me. <laughs> like, and so um, I, I go and I tell this story all the time. Mm -hmm. I only have three options here. Mm. I can go right and go into the trees. Mm. I can go left and go into oncoming traffic. Mm. Or I could do what I ended up doing, which was freezing and hitting him. Mm. I froze. Yeah. I mean, you don't expect anybody to just pull out in front of you like that. No. I don't care if you're in a car or on a motorcycle, whatever. You just, you don't expect it. Yeah. You don't so, have much time to react either. Right. Exactly. Especially on a bike. Yeah. Oh, God. You know, yeah. like, it, it's it, it, like I hindsight, I can say I had those three options. Really? Yeah. I had that, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you know, that. You know, so. That was definitely uh, something that I had to 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 come to. I guess you could say cahoots with man. I, I really didn't have anything else to do. Yeah, and I froze, and I ended up running into this car, which was a Honda Accord, mm -hmm. and it was a, a a man, a male driving it. Um, from the police report, I, all of these things that I state about the accident are from the police report because I remember nothing of it. Wow. So, um, and the reason I say that is because your your brain, your mind goes into this protective state once it's been traumatically injured like that. Mm -hmm. And so you don't remember it. And it's for a good reason. Yeah. It's for a okay. very good reason <laughs> because you would not want to remember this stuff. No. You relive it every day. Yeah. And so uh, I from what they say, I smashed into the car face first, mm -hmm. um, which actually crushed my face in. Of course, breaking the face shield of the helmet, but also crushing my face in. That's how much of an impact it was. Wow. Um, which left me with two metal plates in my head, um, a broken jaw. My eyelid was torn off. My right eyelid was torn off on the bottom side of my eye. And I'm not sure how that portion or that that part happened, but I'm sure it had something to do with the face shield. Yeah. Um, My spine is now medically fused with two rods and 12 screws. Mm, wow. Uh, broke both of my legs to include the biggest bone or largest bone in your body, which is the femur, mm -hmm. um, the tibia and the fibia. Wow. So I'm just, you know, at UNC Hospital in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, asking them to put me back together like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> it's really all I was doing. Mm. But, yeah. Wow. I mean, and not just like 
um, one part of your body being significantly damaged, but multiple. Um, were you out of it for quite some time? Did they have to put you under or how long were you unconscious? Great question. Um, I was actually going to say that, but I would like for you to talk as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Um, life flighted to UNC Hospital where they rushed me, of course, straight to the ICU. Mm -hmm. um, I looked. Gosh, I was swollen. I was so badly swollen. I don't even know how to depict what everyone was saying, mm -hmm. you know, about me. Like I looked nothing like myself. Wow. I was just swollen from all of the um, trauma. Mm -hmm. But I, I I had been in a medically induced coma for a month. Wow. And I'll give you uh, the exact, a month and a day, because I had the accident May 5th, and I came to on June the 6th. Wow. So that's the exact dates. Wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you want to play the lotto... I was discharged on July 7th. So <laughs> May, so five, five, six, six, seven, seven. Those are the dates. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, these numbers mean something. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. You know, so that is exactly what happened. Wow. Um, especially, I mean, it would have been traumatic anyways, but with having lost the time in recovery, what was that like? Jeez. Um, the time in recovery was, of course, it, it seemed like forever, mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, because you're just constantly, for, I mean, initially, I'm constantly trying to figure out what the heck happened. Right. I, I, don't even, I still didn't even know what happened until my mother told me once I, you know, finally came to. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just like, what? There's no way. Like, yeah, I'm the safe rider. You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. I took the courses, the motorcycle courses. I didn't just, you know, go get an endorsement. No, I, I did everything. Right. Why is this happening? <laughs> yeah. Only to find out that it wasn't my fault. Mm. And that was what I always used to say whenever I posted my pictures of my motorcycle, like on, on social media and stuff. Mm. They were like, be safe out there. Please, please be safe. And I'm like, it's not me you have to worry about. It's everybody. Yeah. It's everyone else. It is literally everyone else. And, uh, the recovery, man, I'll tell you, it was actually one of those things. So let me let me put it in perspective for you. I'm an athlete mm -hmm. and have been since I was five. OK, mm -hmm. I started with bowling. Like, that's how much of an athlete I am. Mm -hmm. I literally started with and I don't just mean going out there, just tossing the ball for fun. I mean, literally in a bowling league. Yeah. And I and I had uh, went from that to basketball which I did not like very much. I only played one year of organized basketball, but I like pickup ball. That's fine. Yeah. And then I went and, you know, went on to play football and track and field. Mm -hmm. Those are my two faves, football and track and field. So, um, gosh, you asked me about the different events I did in track and field. I just keep listening. Right. <laughs> like that's how good I was yeah. at being so diverse in my, my, uh, you know, events, mm -hmm. but anywho, so I'm a competitor at heart mm -hmm. all day long. And when it came to rehab, mm -hmm. uh, recovery, learning how to walk again. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's game on. Yeah. You, you have you that now, fire in you. <laughs> yeah. You, you've now given me challenges that I have to do. Right. And I have to conquer and, and say, well, you know what? I'm going to create a deadline for myself, which I did. Mm. Um, I had made a deadline that I wanted to be without any support device. Mm. So no wheelchair transfers, no walker, no support cane. I didn't want any of it. Right. And it was the date that I had set was by my birthday mm. of that same year that I had the accident. Wow. And it, my birthday is November 22nd. Mm. So from July 7th until November 22nd was my timeline to get wow. back on my feet and walking without any support device. Wow. Well, with my competitive spirit, <laughs> I beat that by almost a month. Wow. Yeah, I finished that at the end of October. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> finished it at the end of October, and I was like, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> so That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, 
the first place I went in public uh, without, of course, going to therapy sessions. Mm -hmm. The first place I went in public was church. Wow. That was the first place I went because like I told y'all, I'm, I'm a faith believer. So mm -hmm. um, who who better to go see, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're like, this is the first stop. Exactly. I love exactly. that. Um, did, I'm guessing that that faith played a big role in the mental, emotional recovery as well. A tremendous role because not only, you know, was I talking to God on a, on a daily um, while I was in my hospital bed, while I was at my grandma's house, we prayed every night. Mm. Um, and, and just the simple fact that when I was in that medically induced coma and in the hospital, mm -hmm. there was, and I kid you not, a 24 hour, 24, mm -hmm. there's only 24 in a day. There is a 24 hour prayer wall going on. And wow. that was with my uncle's church. Wow. Um, they were doing that because they believed that God would heal, heal me. And as you can see and hear in my voice, I am healed mm -hmm. here, you know? Yeah. So I that was the next stop. After I went back to my church, the next stop was his. Oh, wow. I love and, that. And, and just he's a senior pastor at his church, which is Couple Salvation Deliverance Church mm -hmm. in Durham, North Carolina. And so my my... When I walked in there and I had on a suit and everything, a suit and tie, everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I walked in and he just happened to see me around the audience, the the congregation, mm -hmm. when he saw me finally, mm -hmm. he looked and he stopped because he was uh, doing Sunday school. Like they were mm -hmm. finishing up Sunday school. And he looked and he was like, what? Oh. <laughs> and I kid you not, burst into tears. Yeah, I can only imagine. He burst straight into tears, sat down in the seat. You know, and uh, yeah. I was like, I'm what? Kidding. And, you know, everybody's clapping and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> and my mom was telling me, you know, yeah. what happened, you know, so I was like, oh, oh, wow. You know, like, yeah. you know, yeah. so and uh, he, he eventually came and gave me a hug. And of course, you know, a lot of other people did, too. <laughs> yeah, that's very special, though. I love that you yeah. went to his as well and not just oh, yeah. yours. Um, oh, yeah. So can you speak to kind of what played a role in your recovery in the mental and emotional aspect um, and not just the physical? Because obviously you did like a lot of uh, physical therapy and, and such. So can you speak to the, to, to what got you through in the, in the emotional mental aspect? Um, so there, I did have my depressed moments when I was uh, not so much at the hospital because it seemed like everybody wanted to come see me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. It was like everybody was just stopping by. And I, I listen, I was so grateful. If you ever have, and this goes out to anybody who has a family member, friend, whatever they are to you, who is in the hospital, I don't care what the issue is. I don't care what the problem is. Please make it a thing to go see them because that you don't understand how much that boosts their spirits. Oh, yeah. To keep fighting. Because that really helped me in my recovery was mm -hmm. people coming to see me. Yeah. Where I slowed down was when I got home and people's like, oh, well, he's home now. Yeah. You don't have to go see him as much. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. And I'm not saying I want people to take off from work to come see me, but, but I mean, yeah. Jesus, you can make a weekend visit, please. Yeah, the visit is still, <laughs> it's that moral support. Yeah, yeah. Sure. you know, you, you could at least make a weekend visit. <laughs> you could even just call me. Yeah. You know, and... And uh, those people who did, because I'm not saying they didn't, nobody did. I'm saying the people who did, I greatly appreciate you once I got home. Um, because again, uh, there were people who came to visit, but there were also people who came to sit, watch with me mm -hmm. while my grandmother had to go back to work. You know, she couldn't yeah. just keep taking PTO for, <laughs> for the rest of her life. Right. <laughs> she was not <laughs> retired, you know. Yeah. So, so those people who were retired, though, came and sat with me. And I greatly appreciate them for that. Mm. Um, and so with the mindset, it again goes back to faith. Mm -hmm. But you, you have to have something to believe in. Yeah. Whether it's faith, whether it's you want you have kids and you're like, I got to get back to play on my kids. Yeah. Or whether it's a spouse. I got to get I want to get back to going on date nights. 
-hmm. You know, it's got to be something that gets you. And even if it's just you wanting to get back to yourself, because that was one of my one of my mm -hmm. biggest things. I did not like looking like what I look like. And I don't even know what I looked like, but I just know it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I can just feel it. This is not right. Me. <laughs> this is not me. And I'm I'm sorry for the listeners who are listening. Uh, the reason I stated it that way is because I am visually impaired. I'm 100 percent blind. So I did not know what I look like. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just know this is not right. It doesn't even feel right for me just mm -hmm. to be cooped up, laid out, you know, right. acting like I can't do anything for myself. This is not me. Mm. I am so independent. You people yeah. do not like me. Like it's, <laughs> it's one of those things. And you were determined to have that regardless of your injuries. I love that. Exactly. Exactly. And so that was when the depression set when, when I started to allow those things to uh, go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. When I started to become dependent on others, when I started to allow myself to sink into the bed, when I when I didn't feel like getting up and I was just like, whatever, who cares? Mm -hmm. That was when the depression set in. Mm -hmm. When you start to give up on yourself, mm -hmm. that's when depression sets in. And I did have a moment where I was like, you know what? I don't even care. I don't even care anymore. Uh, nobody cares if I'm here. So why do I care? Um, like literally had a, a a young lady I was dating at the time of my accident, mm. eventually ghosted me Ouch. to the point where she changed her phone number. Wow. If you got to go to that extreme. Yeah. You didn't love me to begin with. Mm -mm, it was conditional. Right. And I, mm -hmm. I, I can already tell you what the condition was. <laughs> yeah. You, you like what I had. Yeah. And so I I actually thank God for bringing me out of that situation because I don't want somebody who is looking to take me for what I have. Yeah. You know, um, so my thought process to those who need a boost in mind um is to have something that you're fighting for. Mm. Don't just sit there and be like, well, eventually I'll come out of this. No, that's not how you think about it. I'm coming out of this and here's why. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was me. I, I was getting out of that thing and I was coming out of it because I wanted to play with my nephew. I wanted to play with my godson. Well, I got what five nephews. So I wanted to play with all of them. <laughs> I got a, you know, you know, I got a godson. I eventually want to have kids my, myself, you know? Right. You're like, <laughs> so, I've got things to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't I can't be in a wheelchair. I mean, you can, but I yeah. knew I, I didn't have to. Yeah. Because they told me I didn't have to. They Once you give me hope or optimism, oh, it's on. It's on. I'm yeah. going. It's time to go. They said, look, that's all. <laughs> they said. <laughs> they said. <laughs> Not fighter spirit, man. That's all right. you had to hear. <laughs> exactly. They said I could do. Hey, I'm I'm gonna try to do that and some. <laughs> and and uh, I, as for those who might have heard it already, I went to Vermont in yeah. the begin in the mid end of end of January, and went skiing. Wow. As a blind person. Wow. I went skiing and indoor rock climbing. That's awesome. And the thing is, uh, <laughs> I made I made the uh, the Facebook page for the ski lodge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> no joke. I was on the Facebook page. My mom was like, "Hey, you're on their Facebook page." I was like, "What?" She's like, "Not just for skiing either. You're on there for rock climbing too." I was like, "What?" <laughs> so, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, listen, when somebody tells you you can't, show them why you can. Mm. you know and that's wow. how i feel about it when yeah. somebody tells you you can't show them why you can wow yeah I so yeah. i love your testament uh two things to that faith can mean different things to different people yep. what you have faith in i love that mm -hmm. um and just how important community is and that moral support i think we don't talk about it enough so i love that you were like that played a huge part in in your recovery mentally and emotionally. Um, so where are you at now? What are you doing now? Trying to walk straight. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what I mean by that is, good Lord, I feel like I'm going in two different directions. So I, well, 
I just cut off one business because I'm like, I can't keep doing all these multiple business and I am the lead like driver of it. You know, mm-hmm. it's OK if you have a board of people. That's fine. Right. But, but if I'm the main one doing everything, I, don't know, I can't keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> you know, so I had to cut one back. Um, but I am now currently. um you know, the motivational speaker for the business, Amy Motivation. I'm the chief motivational officer there. Uh, and also uh, opening up event spaces hmm. in my local area. So uh, of North Carolina, around the, the the Piedmont Triad area, but and more, it might move over to the Triangle for those who are familiar mm-hmm. with North, North Carolina and that terminology. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, and that's currently what I'm into. So, and, and I, I think no, I didn't make make mention of this. I did already write a book mm-hmm. about my recovery. So that those are the main things that I've been doing, you know. And people have been asking me to co-author stuff now, mm-hmm. which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I've never done that, you know. So <laughs> they were like, "Well, you're you're military, and we served together, and I'm writing a book. You want to co-author my book?" Uh, <laughs> Sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah, that's a cool experience, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah so, yep. Add that one to the list of things that you've accomplished. <laughs> I, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I, I would be remiss if I did not say I am an ambassador as well as a mentor for the Air Force Wounded Warriors program mm. because uh, that I didn't realize how impactful it would be. Mm hmm. But it it is a very strong title to hold. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing that I'm paid for, but right. it pays off. Yeah, you know, um, and I, I I can't even tell you how it makes you feel when you're talking to another person who's going through something either similar or just because you guys have been serving on that you know same same line mm-hmm. of of you know duty military duty mm-hmm. so. It, it it's one of those things, the brotherhood, the camaraderie that comes out and you guys are just jamming it up. And mm-hmm. I keep saying guys, but this is not to uh, say that it's not women in there as well. But, of course. Um, you know, always been a gender neutral term to me. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I, that's how I feel, too. But you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So in wrapping up, um, tell us the title of your book and where we can get it, as well as, um, you know, where people can get in touch with you and what you do. Okay, sure. Um, I hope I can remember everything. So (laughs) the book title is called Don't Focus on Why Me from Motorcycle Accident to Miracle. Mm -hmm. And that can be found on Amazon, Kindle, Audible, as well as Apple Books. Mm -hmm. Um, And those are some in the audio version as well, because I can't physically see. So I definitely wanted to support my VI people um who like to listen to books Uh, um and then as far as finding me on social medias uh a lot of times you you just you know either google or go on to the social media type my first and last name kiwan amy which is k-i-j-u-a-n last name is a-m-e-y you'll more than likely come across my name Mm -hmm. or something that is mine um so i i have a facebook an instagram Twitter is a- at Amy Motivation. So my last name plus Amy plus Motivation. Mm-hmm. And then a LinkedIn, which is, again, my first and last name, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. And then I do have a YouTube channel now um, at Amy Motivation. Uh, I have a personal one as well, which, again, is my first and last name. And as far as my website goes for the motivational speaking business, mm-hmm. that is www.amymotivation.com. So I believe I covered everything. <laughs> yes, you did. And I will make sure that in the show notes, there's links so that people can just click if it's easier for them. Um, yeah. I just want to thank you so much for coming on. I know we've already discussed having you on again in September, um, but you just have such an amazing story. And I really do think that it's very powerful. It is definitely very motivational. So thank you. Thank you. you. Yeah, oh, anytime.